Okay, all done. Okay, thank you very much. That, that was good. Thank you. And lastly, Nikki and Peter, please. Peter Morrison. Good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you for having us here today. I think you all know Peter Morrison. He has President assured Pete. me he's not going to sing. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, I think most of you know who Hospitality New Zealand are. We're a not-for-profit organisation representing about 2,500 members throughout New Zealand and uh, close on 400 members for the Canterbury branch, um, of which Peter is the branch president. Um, so thank you for the opportunity to speak to our submission. You've all got our full submission. But today we're really just going to focus on four of the key areas within our submission. And those are the local alcohol policies, um, short-term rental accommodation compliance, um, bid funding for events, and funding for the Arts Centre. So Pete's going to start with the first bit. Yeah. Hi there, everyone. You will have seen me here over the last two weeks listening and supporting other submissions, namely Philip Aldridge and Murray Dickinson from the Arts Centre, Peter Townsend backing the Arts Centre and event funding, Michael Patterson, Rhea Safer Memorial Avenue at a low cost and also event funding, Barbara Stewart also supporting the Arts Centre, Leanne Watson and um, Tate Dench will be here tomorrow. We are a full member of the, of the Business Canterbury and uh, we 100% support their submissions and um, we support the previous speakers' submissions about the Arts Centre as well. Suffice to say that Hospitality New Zealand are aghast at the thought that events funding and the Arts Centre funding is not supported in the LTP. You as elected members will need to come up with a permanent and sustainable solution to this. Moving on to local alcohol policies or LAPS. In 2012, over $2 million was spent by the agencies on the LAP central, uh, LAP. Central local government certainly does not have these dollars now. In the 12 years that it has been going, there's been very few problems, especially on, on premise. Facts, liquor consumption in New Zealand has decreased 22% since 1986. Less than 20% of alcohol was sold through on premise licenses, which I mean restaurants and bars, etc. So therefore 80% is from off license mostly supermarkets, but also bottle shops. In 2012, we told the council at the time they should put a moratorium on off licences. I know that's the problem at the moment. As you all know, this is where the problem stems from. Easy and a no cost fix. You do need, not need a costly LAP consultation. Okay, so just moving on to short term rental accommodation. Um, <clears throat> So, as you know, Christchurch City Council has short-term rental accommodation rules in place under the district plan, um, capping unhosted accommodation at 60 nights per year. Um, as of October 2023, 3,000 short-term rentals were available across Canterbury, generating 12.2 million. However, we know that applications for resource consent remain very small, and um, both Jeff Peters, who's our accommodation chair, and myself, have had a couple of meetings um, later last year with um, Mark Stevens from CCC Planning. And um, the stance they're taking at the moment is there is there a complaint on um, Airbnb or any of the short-term rentals, they will then go and ask for the consents. Um, so there's not a real big plan to um, you know, get to everyone who has got um, that over 60 days. Um, however, they did assure us in the last meeting that they were trying to um, employ someone to look at that further. But we still know that applications remain very small. Um, in the short term um, hearings, we said that the style of accommodation should pay the building warrant of fitness yearly, as all our members do, all commercial accommodation do. Um, monies from this could fund an enforcement officer or two. So we implore you to... Um, make sure compliance is happening across short-term rental accommodations. Thank you. Next, moving on to bid funding for major and business events. We note the additional funding option laid out in the consultation document regarding event bid funding. Hospitality New Zealand supports an additional rates increase to provide additional event bid funding for major and business events. 
As per the figures from Christchurch NZ in the 2022-23 financial year, 2.9 million was invested in major events, generating 35.8 million in visitor spending and a return on investment of 11 to 1. For the same period, 500k was invested in business events, returning 25.8 million over five years, return on investment of 35 to 1. The forecast ROI for the fund over the period of the long-term plan is $670 million. Are you aware that for business events, Tourism New Zealand gives a dollar for dollar? The rationale to support more event attraction to Christchurch is clear. Events attracting visitors provide immense financial benefit and elevate city vibrancy. Please note that it is not just hotels, bars and restaurants that benefit. I'd like to say the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker all benefit. E.g. taxi, student employment, the hydroponic lettuce grower in Horswell, everyone benefits. Furthermore, given the significant capital investment made into infrastructure and facilities in Christchurch, particularly Tapai and the upcom upcoming Takaha multi-use arena and Pakori operation and Pakori Centre as well, uh, operational investment and in events is needed to ensure that most is made of this infrastructure and to maximise return on investment. Aside from funding for event, event, event attraction, Council also has a role to play in reducing the restrictions and the red tape involved in hosting events. Restrictive policies reduce the number of events that can be held each year and do not incentivise event organisers to bring their events to Christchurch. So just in conclusion with our um, presentation, um, we do recommend um, the four things that um, you continue with the national setting of liquor licensing, working with regulatory agencies to ensure that the Act is enforced um, as it was written and intended. Um, so we do recommend that there's no LAP needed. Um, we also uh, recommend that you enforce the district plan rules for all short-term rental accommodation that meets the threshold of needing a consent. Um, we recommend that you support additional event bid funding for major and business events through additional rates increase. And we also support um, funding for the Arts Centre. We'd be happy to discuss any of that. Thank you. You're out of time, but I've got a couple of questions, Sarah and then Andre. Thanks so much. Um, just one quick question on the LAP. Um, Peter, you mentioned that there were there were no issues on premise. Um, Very heard, few. A, a few, yeah, yeah. But we did hear from the CCBA earlier who um, have been having ongoing concerns about the amount of broken glass and vomit and things um, in, in that kind of the, the sort of hospitality area um, after a big, you know, after Friday and Saturday nights. Um, and that's something that, that ratepayers currently cover the cost of cleaning up? But I would say that it's been bought at supermarkets and off-premise and people drinking, not from, not from bars, because people aren't allowed to leave bars and, and restaurants with, with bottles. Yeah. That's, that is the problem. They can still buy alcohol. Yeah, but they're coming to town to yeah. the sort of hospitality area. That's right, but they, they don't... In they, bars. They're not allowed in the bars with, with their own alcohol. It's, no. They've, they've bought it. They go back to the cars and... I Thank think you. what we're talking with LAP, LAP wouldn't even address that. I mean, um, local alcohol policies are just putting um, different kind of settings in for licences. However, as the Act was intended, there are many ways, many holistic ways of working within the Act that um, there can still be scrutiny for particular venues under the Act, opposed to having a local al alcohol policy. Okay. Thank you. Andre, please. Thank you. Um, obviously, been a very tough three years to the hospitality sector, and we're coming into a difficult winter period. Can you just talk about what it would do for the confidence of the sector to learn mid-winter uh, that a decision has been made to have even, well, substantially less event funding for the next three years than there were over the last three challenging years? <laughs> they wouldn't be happy at all. I mean, we're only just getting back over the earthquakes. Now we're and we're getting back over COVID. And if you don't, you're not going to attract events here. It's just going to be disastrous. Okay. We also Thank think you. so. You've invested yeah. in all these amazing yeah. infrastructure, and you need to make sure that that is full all the time. Um, it's just a win-win. You're bringing, you're attracting people in. I mean, tapai has been the perfect example of bringing a lot of people into Christchurch with all their events. Mm. So okay. disastrous last, for the last confidence of our <clears throat> business. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Really quickly, in LAP, what? Would your view change on a lap that really just looked to regulate off-licence bottle stores? Oh, yeah, as I said in 2012, we said that should happen. Yeah, because that, that everyone, everyone that you see in the paper is all about 
Yeah. Bottle stores I've, being built in, in neighbourhoods and bits and pieces. I agree. We don't yeah. have a problem with on-licences. Yeah. off we want, we want to also say that we, um, as Hospitality New Zealand, are looking at approaching this um, from a national perspective with government as well because we always feel the government um, perspective. It just saves money for all local councils having to look at it individually when there can be good national settings on this. Yep. Thank you. Cool. And thank you for the time on your submission. And thank, thank you. you, everyone else, for being here. And I'll thank you in the morning for being here at 9.30 tomorrow morning. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Have a lovely day.